Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, it's something a little bit different. You know, uh, I'm sure a lot of you already own Luminar 3, and you've took and you've taken the plunge, and you've purchased Luminar 4. And Luminar 4 is awesome. I mean, we have sky replacement. We have AI structure. We have really cool stuff in there. But I'll tell you what, Luminar 3 has things that Luminar 4 can't do. So for myself, I'm keeping both of these pieces of software because... Uh, there's some really cool things that you can do in Luminar 3. And I wanted to start out with uh, just going over the interface real briefly in Luminar 4 and then launch into uh, Luminar 3 and show you the really cool features in Luminar 3. Because uh, you may be thinking, well, I'm just going to get rid of Luminar 3, take it off my computer, save some space. But don't do that. When I'm done with this video, I'm sure you're going to want to keep it on your computer. Okay, so let's get started. Starting out in Photoshop here, and I'm going to launch uh, Luminar 4 first and then go to Luminar 3. So I've just created myself a couple layers here. I'm going to use this first layer to go into Luminar 4. So I'm just going to come up to my filter here and uh, Skylum Software, and let's launch Luminar 4. And let's just go over the interface just very briefly here so we can compare the two interfaces. All right. Now they both use looks. And they both use pretty much the same filters. They're found in different places. But here's the cool thing with Luminar 4. You have uh, these tabs right here. Essentials, Creative, Portrait, and Pro. And we have something similar, similar in Luminar 3. But this is nice. When you're on Essentials, which we are right here, we have Light. So we could do overall light adjustments here. Of course, we have our AI Enhance, which is awesome. And I've showed you that in the past. And we have our AI Structure. And we have Color, Black and White Conversions. Detail Enhancer, Denoise, Landscape Enhancer, Vignette. They're all in a neat little location for you. It's not a cluttered interface, and that's a really plus for Luminar 4. And then when we go to Creative, here's all our creative tools here. And this is where AI Sky Replacement lives in Sunrays, Dramatic, Matte Look, Mystical, all the really cool uh, filters or tools in here. And of course, if you're going to work on portraits, you don't have this in Luminar 3 at all. And you have the Skin Enhancer, Portrait Enhancer, and I'm sure you've watched videos on uh, what Luminar can do with portraits, and it's pretty amazing stuff. And then we have our Pro Palette here, and we have the different Pro Adjustment tools in here, like Split Toning and Photo Filters, Color Enhancers, Dodge and Burn. And we have these features in, uh, most of these features anyway, in Luminar 3 as well. But this interface is nice and clean, and it's a nice setup. One thing it is lacking, though, and I'll... I'll wait till we get to Luminar 3 and I'll point that out. But that's basically the interface. Now we have our layers up here. We can add layers and we can add adjustment layers. We can add a new image layer if we want to add another image on top. We can create a stamp layer where we can take all our um, adjustments and stamp them down to one layer, which is really cool. So there's cool features here. And you can do all this in Luminar 3, by the way. And then we have our canvas here where we can do erasing and cloning. Okay, and of course we have dodging and burning and all the cool stuff. So that's basically the Luminar 4 interface. And that was just a little brief run through so you can compare it with Luminar 3. All right, so I'm just going to click apply. I didn't do anything to it, but that'll just take me back to Photoshop. I could uh, click cancel, but sometimes when I click cancel, it does a weird thing where it takes forever to cancel out. So I just learned to click apply and nothing happens to it. So, but there we go. Actually, I didn't really need two layers because I didn't do anything in Luminar 4, so no big deal. So now let's go ahead and launch uh, Luminar 3. And let's go up here to Filter and uh, Skylum Software and Luminar 3. Give it a second or two to launch here. And then we're going to go over this uh, interface. And I'll show you the big differences here and why I love it so much and why I won't get rid of it. I'm just working with a stock image today, by the way. Um, but here's the Luminar 3 interface. Now, it's not as clean, albeit I grant you that. It's not very clean at all. So see right here where it says Add Filter? If you click Add Filter, you have all the different filters inside of Luminar 3. And there's a bunch of them in here. And they are grouped like Essential, kind of how they're doing it in Luminar 4. Uh, issue fixers like Clarity, Dehaze, and things like that. They have a creative section in here. You know, your Orton effect lives here. And soft focus, dramatic, a lot of the same, most of the same filters you're going to see in Luminar 4, by the way. They've carried over, but they're found in different places. Professional, like advanced contrast, dodge and burn, LUT mapping, all that stuff. 
uh, utilities like bicolor tuning, exposure, highlights and shadows, top and bottom lighting. But it's kind of, the, all these filters are here and there's a lot of them and it can be a little overwhelming, but I like that they broke it down into these different groups here. Okay, so let's go and let me show you one of the things I really like about this. And that would be, let's just click on, um, let's, let's do clarity just for the heck of it. Okay, so let's pick clarity here. Now, we can go ahead and take the clarity and pull the clarity up a good bit here. And what if I wanted to just say add the clarity to um, just to maybe the bird's eye right here. All right. So I could come up here. Things are found in a different location, but see the little brush here? And I can do a brush and I can mask it in here. And so I can just make my brush a little smaller here. And I'm on paint in. And this is very similar. In fact, I think it's the same as uh, Luminar 4. So I can come in here and just paint in. The clarity on this eye right here okay and then I could come here well I can click done now on this particular version you do have to click done when you're done actually in Luminar 4 you don't really have to a lot of people says Dave why aren't you clicking done because in Luminar 4 after you've made a masking adjustment and you go on to the next filter it automatically closes it but here it'll stay open and so when we go to clarity here and I start to pull this up or down see it's only adjusting the bird's eye right but here, to me, is the superpower of Luminar 3. I can add 10 clarity filters in a stack if I want to. So if I wanted another clarity filter and say, you know what, uh, give me another clarity filter. Whoops, and there it is right there. It gives me another clarity filter right there. Now I can come here and let's pull up the clarity and and say, you know what, I want to um, get a brush tool here. And I want to add a different amount of clarity, but I want to add some clarity to say, and I'm still on paint into these feathers like right up in here. Okay, just certain ones. I'm just picking out, this is what I would call doing local adjustments where you're just fine tuning your image to certain areas, like maybe like right in here. All right, now let me click done. Now, on this particular uh, clarity filter, we can come here and pull the adjustment back. See, and it's only affecting that section right in there, right? Okay. So if I come here and click this eyeball, I shut that clarity off. If I come here and click this eyeball, I shut the clarity off, and that's on the bird. And then we can come here, and they don't let us. Did they let us rename these? I can't remember. That would have been nice if you could have renamed the layers. No, you can't rename them. I couldn't remember that, but you can't rename the layers. It would be nice if I could say, this is the eye, this is the feathers. That would have been nice, but you can't. But, so we can stack up filters. That's really a great feature. Now, here is something really big for me in Luminar 3 that you can't do in Luminar 4. And that is, if you come, let's just add a simple filter here, like the tone filter right here. Okay, and no adjustments are made on it, okay? And I want, and there is dodging and burning in both Luminar 3 and Luminar 4, but I'll show you a really cool way that I like to dodge and burn, and that is with blend modes, okay? So say, for instance, I wanted to um, darken up the beak of this bird right here. Okay, so I can come here to Tone and click this little drop down here and go to the blend mode, put this in a multiply blend mode here, okay? And then come over to my mask, and get a brush tool and then come over here invert this mask so that multiplied blend mode goes away and my brush size is at 10 right now and I'll change it I can use the left and right bracket keys softness is at 100 and I like to leave that at 100 percent and let's take our opacity and let's just take it down here for about here around 58 percent what I want to do is just darken the beak like kind of burn this down a little bit I'm going to use my bracket key I'm going to be on paint in again. I'm at a 58 size brush. Softness is at 100%, so I got a lot of feathering. Now watch. I can come in here and just darken in this beak right here using a multiply blend mode, which does a wonderful job for burning. And I I use these blend modes in Photoshop all the time, but it's great when I could use it in Luminar. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller, 
and just come up and paint this part of the beak here. So I can burn this in. Isn't that cool? And I have overshot there, but you get the point, right? So if I click the eyeball here, there's before and after. Now let me move over to, I, I did open up Luminar 4 to show you. Now let's just pretend that I've got a bunch of adjustments done here in Luminar 4 and then I wanted to, you know, do my little trick where I go and um, go and get a multiply blend, blend mode just to darken some part, parts of the image or get a screen blend mode and lighten some parts of the image. Uh, normally I could just go and grab another light filter or light tool, but I can't here. They only let me have one light tool. I can get another light tool, but I'd have to come up here to uh, layers, add a new layer add a new adjustment layer and uh, then I could come and say grab a new light tool here but there is no blending mode here so then I could come up here I could still do it I could come up here to layer on that layer I'm on and change the blend mode of that entire layer to multiply and then I could edit my mask get a brush tool uh, do the same thing I did in Luminar 3 invert it and let's get an opacity of about where was I around like 59%, 60%? I'm on paint in and make my brush a little smaller. I'm using 100% softness. And you know, I could come and do the same thing here, but it's a little bit more of a, you know, a workaround to get to it. Where like in Luminar 3, let's go back to Luminar 3. In Luminar 3, all I have to do is, you know, is uh, grab a, uh, grab a blend mode here, you know, like multiply or burn or whatever I want, and then just grab a brush and mask it in. Okay, so I think that's a pretty cool feature and something I really miss in Luminar 4. Now let's say I want to do some uh, dodging, maybe lighten up some areas around the, the bird here in this lighter areas here. So, so let me come here and grab another, um, where is it? See, this interface, everything's all over the place here, so tone right there. And I'm not going to do any adjustments here, but I'm going to change the blend mode to screen this time to lighten things. And let's get another brush. And let's go ahead and invert. And let me, uh, let's, let's get our opacity around, around 39%. And say, I just want to lighten up some areas in here locally, right? So I might come in here and I'm painting in so see I can lighten up in here do a little bit of dodging here in just certain areas right here like that okay and then I can click this eye right here and you can see the before and after so that's really cool but the nice thing is I don't have to come and if I want to make another adjustment I don't have to come up here to layer and add new adjustment layer right if I was in Luminar 4 like this adjustment layer with this mask on here, it's kind of, it's a one trick pony. All I can do is do that, uh, that uh, burning effect that I did on the beak here. So then I'd have to come and grab a new adjustment layer. And then I could come and grab any tool that I want and keep working. But in Luminar 3, I can just say, you know what? I want another tool. Let me get a, um, uh, let's see, what kind of a tool do I want here? Structure. What if I wanted to blur out the background here a little bit more? So I can take this structure tool and take the amount and pull it back like that, but I don't want it everywhere. And I'm still on that same layer right there, which is really nice and convenient. So now I can come to the brush tool and come to the brush tool and let's see, go to mask, invert it and get rid of that. And then I can just, I have my brush here. I'm getting confused, <laughs> forgive me. Make my brush bigger. My mind is on 100 million things here. So let me pull up the opacity, and now I'm on paint in, so now I can, look, I can paint that softness in, right there. And I did not have to get a new adjustment layer. And maybe up in here a little bit, but you get the idea, right? And I'm doing a sloppy job here, but. So there, so now let's click this eyeball right here before and after. Now I already mentioned under the tone here, we don't have this in Luminar 4, but we have this smart tone. This is a really great filter right here. So let's turn up the smart tone here. You know, something like, 
and maybe just right around there. And then I can come with the contrast and adjust that a little bit. Maybe pull the smart tone up a little bit more. Let's see the before and after. So we don't have the smart tone in, in uh, Luminar 4, and we do have it in Luminar 3, so that's really a cool feature. But I might say, you know what? I don't like it in the background here, so let's go ahead and get a, a brush here, a layer mask brush. What am I doing here? Sometimes that doesn't come up when I click that. So I'm going to click on brush. Bugs, bugs, bugs. So brush. And I'm on going to erase. So let's just erase it. And I'm at 99% opacity. So I'm going to erase that smart tone. And I'm going doing it very sloppily here. But I'm just going to erase that smart tone from around these areas right here. Because I don't want that background getting lighter. So, you know, something like that. Now, if I click this um, eyeball here, see, it's only affecting the bird then. Okay, so uh, tone is really nice too. Smart tone, by the way. But the fact that I can, um, you know, at, I can stack filter upon filter upon filter, I can't really do that in, um, in Luminar 4. I mean, I can stack filters up, but I got to keep getting new layers. But here... I can come and say, I want another tone layer. Let's go ahead and save this out. So we can come up here to click apply and that'll save this, bake these adjustments in and bring me back into Photoshop. Now this is not a true edit here today. I'm just showing you some things today. But we can come here and we can click on, there's the before and there's the after, okay? But anyway, in conclusion here, do I love Luminar 4? Yes, I love Luminar 4. Sky replacement, AI structure. A basic, simple interface, really easy to work with. You can get things done quickly and, and efficiently, and I love it. And I'm going to continue to use it because it's great. It's great if you're a beginning photo editor, and I highly recommend it. Uh, Luminar 3, to me, it's a little bit more of, an more of an advanced tool, if that makes any sense. It doesn't have all the features of Luminar 4, but... You know, it seems like, uh, you know, Skylum has kind of like changed their thoughts on uh, on Luminar a little bit and they moved into a new uh, kind of a structuring system the way they're doing it. That's probably not a good way of saying it, but I think you know what I mean. They're just doing it a different way now. I think they're just trying to just make it more easy, easy to understand, if that makes sense. So should you get rid of your Luminar 3, please don't do it. <laughs> you know, keep it, use it. Use Luminar 3, use Luminar 4. They're both really excellent. They both can do some things that the other one can't do. So keep them both. And that's my bottom line. Well, I want to end on a note here, a happy note. Here's Luminar 4 interface right here. It's such a clean, easy to use interface. And if you're just starting out in photo editing, it is the way to go and I love it. But do not get rid of your Luminar 3 because, man, there's really cool features in there. And I'm going to keep mine and I'm going to keep on using it. Uh, please leave comments and questions in the comment section below. And let's talk about this. Did you like Luminar 3? Do you like Luminar 4? Did you like one better than the other? Let me know. Let's talk about this. Hey, and if you like this video today, please like it and share it with your friends. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. This way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. Well, I want to thank each and every one of my viewers and subscribers. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.